Now, on to modern Africa. Here is the continent, and we're going to be talking about Africa from 1945 until today. Why did independence movements erupt in Africa after World War II? Some background on this, and it has to do with the United Nations. The United Nations, and let's remember it was formed in 1945, guaranteed that all colonies throughout the world the right to self-determination. In other words, the right to chart their own future. As a result of this, independence movements in Africa challenged European imperialism in the years that followed. And European countries soon had to give up their African colonies. So why did these independence movements erupt? Pride in African cultures and heritage started to grow. Resentment, anger of imperial rule started. And there was a recognition of economic exploitation by the Europeans. They were taking advantage of African countries. Britain, France, Belgium, and Portugal all lost their colonies in Africa during this time. Let's remember back to the 1800s when white European rulers were dividing up Africa because they wanted to get rich. This was no longer the case after World War II. Let's talk about some specific African countries. Here's the continent. And let's start in the north with Algeria. Here's its flag, and Algeria's slogan for independence was peace does not include a vendetta. There will be neither winners nor losers. Algeria is the largest country in Africa, and it was owned by France. It was France's primary colony. About 9 million Muslim Arabs live there and 1 million French in 1954, the Algerian National Liberation Front comes in and they announced that they would fight for their freedom. So a bloody war follows between those Algerians and France. And France starts to realize that it could not be held by force. The French troops leave and Algeria in July 1962 becomes independent. From Algeria, let's travel south to the western African country of Ghana. Here is Ghana's flag, and its slogan was self-government now. And Ghana was led by Kwame Nkrumah. Here he is. He fought for independence nonviolently, and he wanted positive action through strikes and protests and boycotts. In 1957, Ghana becomes the first sub-Saharan, that is, country below the Sahara Desert, to gain independence. On we go. Let's go further east and talk about this country, Kenya, in Africa. Kenya's slogan was, where there has been racial hatred, it must be ended. Where there has been tribal animosity, it will be finished. Let us not dwell upon the bitterness of the past. In Kenya, it was owned by Britain, and British settlers took the best farmland there, of course, to get rich. This man, Jomo Kenyatta, worked nonviolently for independence in Kenya. But then that all changed with the Mau Mau Rebellion when Kenyans started to burn the farms of the British, and violence started to happen. In 1963, Kenyans eventually win their independence from Britain, and after Jomo Kenyatta is taken out of prison, he becomes the first president of an independent Kenya. Let's travel from Kenya south all the way to the country of South Africa. And here is the South African flag. The cry for freedom in South Africa was free Mandela and apartheid. What is apartheid? Well, it's a word that means legal separation of the races in South Africa. In America, 
we had the Jim Crow laws. In South Africa, they had apartheid. If you were black, you had a separate bathroom, you had a separate beach, you had a separate part of a bus or train. Nelson Mandela protested apartheid and as a result of some of his ideas, he spent 27 years in prison. Once he was released, was he bitter? No. In fact, he negotiated with the white leaders in South Africa to end apartheid. And once South Africa ends apartheid, he becomes the first elected black president in South Africa's first full election in which blacks and whites could both vote. So Nelson Mandela is the MVP of South Africa, and I would argue the MVP of modern Africa because of how much he stood up to power. Let's now head to the modern Middle East and talk from 1945 until today. Here's the Middle East in gray. And some background. The mandate system established after World War I by the League of Nations, does this look familiar, was phased out after World War II. And with the end of the mandate system, new independent countries were created in the Middle East. In dark orange, you have Syria and Lebanon. They used to be owned by France. Now they're free. In light orange, you have Jordan and Palestine, they were owned by Britain, they become free. Let's talk about Israel. Israel was a state created for Jews. It's important to point out the vocabulary word Zionism, which is Jewish nationalism that supports a Jewish nation in the land of Israel. And the United Nations votes to create Israel in the country of Palestine. So here is the chunk of land that is Israel today, and in green you have Palestine. So in May 1948, Palestine becomes Israel. And this decision by the United Nations has led to regional conflicts that continue today. Palestine was basically told, you must give up your land. And for some Palestinians, this felt like stealing to them. And here is an important Israeli leader. Her name is Golda Meir. She's the Iron Lady of Israel. One historian called her the strong-willed, straight-talking, gray-bond grandmother of the Jewish people. And she is most known for her victory in the Yom Kippur War. During the holiest day in all of the religion known as Judaism, she defeated a Muslim force. This was the fourth time the Arab-Israeli war had broken out. And she could no longer depend on Europe for support, so she turned to the United States, who allied with Israel in this Yom Kippur war. From Israel... Let's travel west to talk about Egypt. Here it is. Egypt, modern Egypt, was shaped by this man, Gamal Abdul Nasser. In 1952, Nasser led a revolution against the Egyptian king and against the imperial British who had owned Egypt and had been there since 1882. So, under Nasser, Egypt takes control of the Suez Canal, which is located within Egypt. And it had been controlled by Europe since 1875. When you control the Suez Canal, you make a lot of money. And Nasser also modernized and industrialized Egypt. Like Nehru did for India, Nasser does for Egypt. And Nasser establishes ties with the Soviet Union and becomes a world stage player. He also builds the Aswan Dam, which is a dam that is on the Nile River. There it is. And control of it was called the Miracle of the Nile. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have one more set of summary questions before you are done with VidNotes for the year. Let's end this year with a 30 out of 30. And then the end. That's all I have for this year. This is VidNotes out. Mr. Deegan signing off for good.